Well, you guys, today is April 8th, 2024. I mean, maybe maybe when you're watching this video, it's not April 8th. But um, this is when I'm filming it. And it is, uh, oh, it's after 5 p.m. And it's a beautiful, sunshiny day here in San Diego. It's been a beautiful day all day today. I went out to... Um, Today is Monday, so I take Sundays and Mondays off from work and uh, get things done. You know, I got my taxes done today and um, I accomplished a lot. But what I did this morning, because I didn't want to go to the gym today either, I'm like, you know, I need to do, I usually uh, do three days on with working out and then I take one day off three days on one day off three days on one day off I used to work out seven days a week and I think my body needs a little recuperation time right <laughs> we need to recuperate but um I went out to the swimming pool I sat in the jacuzzi for a while and heated up and then I went into the swimming pool which is not heated right now so it's ice cold oh it's so cold but I like to do that cold water therapy I do cold water therapy every day um, first thing in the morning when I, uh, I I get in the shower, I turn it on hot, get myself nice and warmed up for a little bit, and then I turn the water on all the way cold, and I torture myself for about a good a good minute and a half to two minutes, and I like it. Um, I'm also I like to ground myself. I walk barefoot in this grass here, and uh, it feels nice to walk barefoot in the grass so I decide to come out here and do that right now I don't think any mosquitoes are out yet those bugs are really oh man they're they're getting to me maybe maybe some of you guys know something if you want to leave a comment for me if you know anything about about vitamin b1 I was listening to I don't I don't know how many of you listen to um the facts by how to hunt this guy named Steve has a, a channel called The Facts by How to Hunt. And uh, he was reading an email from a hunter and the hunter was talking about going into the deep woods and how many mosquitoes there are in the deep woods and how he has tried everything to fight mosquitoes, right? Like um, mosquito uh, spray, you know, that, that, that stuff called DEET or deep woods. And so last summer, and late spring, I was getting eaten up out here in San Diego by mosquitoes. And I don't know. I, I, I never really had a problem with mosquitoes in San Diego. I've been out here all my life and never really had a problem with mosquitoes before. But they seem to uh, be here now for the last few years or so. But I really got torn up last year. You know, I'm a hairstylist and I go, I'm a mobile hairstylist. So when I go work on people, do, do haircuts at their houses, um, it kind of, it, it, it bothers me to put mosquito spray on my body. I don't like those chemicals anyway, but last summer I was spraying myself with this stuff and I just didn't like how I smelled. It stinks and, and I don't like the way it feels. You know, I'd rather do something natural. And I know, I know, some of you are gonna say, have you tried Avon Skin So Soft? Have you tried this? I don't want anything on my skin. I don't wanna put anything on my skin. But this guy that Steve read the email from, this guy said he's tr he tried everything. And he says the best thing he's, he, he, he's used so far is, is uh, taking vitamin B1, which converts into thiamine, I think. So uh, I don't know the dose he does, but I, I, got a, I got a thing of vitamin B1 and I've, I've been taking it for a little while now, preparing myself for, um, preparing myself for, uh, for the mosquito season. And I don't really like taking vitamins. I don't take any multivitamins. I don't take any medications. I don't have any meds in me or take any vitamins. The only thing I take is... Uh, I take um, vitamin B1, hoping that I'm taking enough to uh, repel these mosquitoes. And then also I take um, L-arginine capsules before I go to the gym, which is basically L-arginine is an amino acid. 
and I like what it does for me before I work out at the gym. It kind of, it seems to uh, give me a better pump, right? So anyway, if anybody out there knows the dosage, I mean, I've looked online and tried to find out how much, but I can't find anything. But maybe some of you have had experience with B1, if it works or not, I don't know. Um, I went hiking not too long ago and I went through, oh man, I mean, I was going through spider webs like crazy. I kept going through more and more spider webs were all over my face, all over my body. And the next day I had a couple big swollen bites on my arms. And I don't know if those were mosquito bites or if they were spider bites. I mean, I was going face first through webs and you know, I don't really like spider webs all over me, but that's what happened. So I don't know if I got mosquito bites or spider bites. The guy didn't say that taking vitamin B1 um, gets rid of spiders, but he said it was the best mosquito repellent. Oh, I, I should walk over. Oh no, they put a caution tape up. Okay, I can't go over there now. But uh, yesterday I went on this, oh, let see if you can see over here. Over here, there's a, see this wood fence? Well, over there, they don't want people going through there, but it was opened up yesterday because the fence broke down. So I walked out. There's like a little cliff area over here. And I walked out there and I was grounding myself. And, uh, oh man, I, I saw a big old, like a four foot black snake slither by and went into a hole. And, um, like, whoa, I didn't even know we had snakes out here. I know there's snakes in San Diego, but I didn't know in this part of San Diego there were snakes. I've lived out here a long time. I haven't seen any snakes. This is this is um, an area where, um, if you know, if you've ever heard of Del Mar, this is an area where Del Mar out in San Diego and another area called Carmel Valley, um, they kiss each other. And so beautiful area the oceans right over here but anyway um so if any of you have advice about mosquitoes you know and then uh also <laughs> be careful of snakes you guys it's snake season obviously uh, when i ground myself you know i i look at the ground a lot because i don't want to step in dog surprises you know people walk their dogs out here and sometimes the dogs leave little gifts on the in the grass or even on the sidewalk and and uh some owners don't pick it up right maybe they don't have a little doggy bag to pick it up in or maybe they didn't maybe they're not paying attention or maybe they just figure eh, eh nobody's around so i'm not going to pick it up today but i i look down so i don't step barefoot in any of that but it looks pretty clean really beautiful really beautiful i love coming out here try to ground myself as much as possible anyway um so today is april 8th and i when i was out at the the pool today the jacuzzi i went in both i did the jacuzzi and then i went to the pool which was ice cold oh man that was such cold water colder than my shower is when i turn it on all the way cold so i sat in there for about three minutes of doing cold water therapy and then i went back into the hot water again supposedly that might increase your natural production of of growth hormone which you know i wouldn't mind having a, a higher growth hormone level i don't know i used to have super low testosterone and when i was 40 years old i'm 52 now i'm, I'm not embarrassed to tell my age a lot of people are i don't care but um when i was 40 years old I had the first first time in my life I ever had blood work taken, and um, and my uh, and so this doctor uh, said I had low thyroid and low testosterone, very low testosterone. He said my testosterone was equivalent to a seventy year old man with low testosterone. I'm like, what? And he says, yeah, it doesn't make sense. He says, I think what happens is the lab is the lab. I think they they accidentally switched your results with somebody else. So he had me come back in again and do more blood work. And sure enough, it's, it turned out the same. So my thyroid and my testosterone were ultra low. So they prescribed testosterone and thyroid. And this testosterone is a, it's a gel that you put on your shoulders. So I was doing that for years. And, you know, I didn't really... 
I don't know if I noticed much of a difference, maybe. Maybe more with a thyroid, you know? I always, always had my muscle. I didn't gain more muscle. He wasn't putting me on bodybuilder amounts of, of, of testosterone. It was just to get me, um, get me at a level, I guess, which is um, for my age, you know, balanced me out. So after years of doing it, I didn't like the side effects though. There's some side effects that come along with it. And then when there are side effects, oh, well, here's a pill for this side effect. Here's another one for that. And I just like, I don't know. I just didn't want to, I didn't want to take it anymore. But, you know, I'm like, well, I can't crash off of this stuff. And, and what happened was once I started this diet called carnivore diet, I remember the last blood test I've done. And I've been on carnivore for a while now and I feel great. I've never felt better in my life. Um, I'm not a diet um uh, I'm not a medical advice giver or anything like that, but man, I found the right way to eat for me for sure. And I've never felt better. And my last blood test I got, I had blood work done last year and he said my testosterone was super high. And he says, what are you doing different? And I'm like, um, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on the carnivore diet. And he, the doctor of course was like, oh, well that's going to kill you and all this stuff. But I said I've never felt better and he doesn't like me to say that but and I'm not I'm not a doctor going guy but you know I for the you know when you have thyroid and testosterone I'm a believer I believe in healing of course I do but you know um I never got healing for my testosterone or my thyroid but anyway maybe this diet I really feel like I was directed by the Lord to get on this kind of way of eating for myself and um and I think it might have boosted my testosterone. So I, I, I dumped all the meds and I'm, I'm med free and I'm vitamin free. I don't do any vitamins except for, like I said, B1 and L-arginine. Okay, so now back to uh, saying that because I said I was going in the hot water and cold water. And supposedly it helps you with growth hormone production. I'm like, okay, well, that's cool. <laughs> I wouldn't mind having natural growth hormone. See that? That's a nice view, isn't it? See, there's the ocean right over there. That's the ocean there. And right there, so there's the ocean. And then right here are the salt water, kind of like lakes, I guess you might call them. I forget what you call it, a marsh. So uh, it's a nice view today. And when I was sitting in the jacuzzi, you know, a buddy of mine texted me and he says, hey, did you know that the eclipse is supposed to be in Southern California at 11, 11 a.m.? And I said, no, I didn't know that. How cool is that? So I turned my phone on and I aimed it toward the sun. I just let it sit there and I filmed the sun the whole time. And guess what? I never saw anything. And then my roommate said that uh, the eclipse was actually earlier than that. So my roommate saw the eclipse, but I didn't. But anyway, I guess if you're watching this video right now then you like myself have not been raptured away you have not been raptured away have you now i want to share something with you about this and uh, let me just mention something before i do though i think what i want to call this video is um undeveloping impatience will develop patience undeveloping impatience will help you to develop patience you guys so i want you to remember that when i continue when i talk about this real quick i made a video uh talking about you know Arm armageddon always just around the corner you know i was raised a Jehovah's Witness, 30 years in that religion. And and uh, for 30 years of my life, it was always Armageddon and the Great Tribulation. There are just around the corner, just around the corner, always just around the corner. And when I left the Jehovah's Witnesses religion at 30 years old, well then, you know, what, what I was hearing from the Christians was the rapture was just around the corner and all these different signs of the rapture, all these different things that people, oh, it's the, you know, the, the blood moons, rapture, 
and th certain dates that people were, oh, the, the Bible proves it. If you add all these dates, these, these numbers together, it's going to come up to, to September 23rd. That's going to be the rapture. Uh, you know, I heard all these different rapture things and, and blood moon signs and eclipses and the, re the, the red heifer. Why don't you just say red cow? Nobody calls cows heifers, but, you know, I guess it sounds more spiritual if you say heifer. The red cows, and listen, I'm not mocking. I am not mocking this. But when I made this video about, um, about Armageddon being just around the corner, and I mentioned these things that Christians do, I said it's kind of like the boy that cried wolf. You know, people are always, every year, at least a couple times a year, there's more prophecy date setters that the end is coming and we're going to be raptured. And every year, every year, even people have dreams it's coming soon. I'm not saying it's not coming soon. I'm not saying that at all. But when, but when I made this video, people contacted me and there were people that were offended. And I think I lost four or five subs right away after that video. I'm on subbing. And uh, I had people messaging me through, um, you know, email, uh, Facebook Messenger, uh, text messages, uh, some comments on on YouTube, you know, and some were positive, but a lot of the messages were negative. Like, like can't believe that you'd say that, you know, can't believe you would you you would make a video like that. I didn't say nothing's going to happen on April eighth. I just. <laughs> I believe this, you know, whatever happens, here's the most important thing that I believe that we could, we could do. And when I say do, I'm talking about resting, I'm not saying about doing some type of works or doing some type of prepping for this. I'm talking about resting. You should rest in who you are. That's the most important thing you could know. Who you are who you are in Christ, who Christ is in you. You are one with Christ. What does that make you? It makes you a son of God. Do you know who you are? And as a son of God, is there any reason to panic? As a son of God, is there any reason to give false prophetic dates? Is there any reason to get everybody all stirred up in, an, in a way to get them? I'm not saying you, you can stir up the spirit in you. But I'm talking about getting people in a frenzy, oh no, and, and then having the Christians looking so stupid again, like we're, they're just a bunch of boys and girls that cry wolf because every year people hear from the Christians, it's coming, it's coming, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, yeah, yeah, yeah. blood moon, heifer, red heifer, you know, eclipses. Oh, CERN, CERN supposedly was gonna do something on the same at the same time of the eclipse and they were gonna let something in or release something out and, and I'm not you know I'm not saying they wouldn't do something like that you know I mean who knows I've heard it all though and I'm not a denier but I'm also don't want to get people all worried or afraid you know the thing is perfect love casts out fear are you bathing in God's love? Are you absorbing it? Do you know what love is? I realize that, you know, I don't even know if I have touched a little drop of what love is, you know, as far as comprehending it, explaining it, knowing it. I'm sure I have experienced the love of God. Of course I have. But do I really truly know in my mind, in my soul, this love in my spirit? Your spirit is love. Because you're joined to the Spirit of God and God is love. So your spirit's one with love. So do you know who you are inside? Do you know who you are in the Spirit? And this is what ties into undeveloping impatience will help you to develop patience. Because patience comes from the Spirit. Patience is called a fruit of the Spirit right the fruit is is something that the spirit gives birth to right a tree is known by its fruit so the fruit of patience comes from your spirit the spirit of life the spirit of love the spirit of patience 
Okay? So, so if you have a problem with being impatient, right? Especially end time stuff. When's it coming? When's a rapture coming? When's it all going to end? When am I going to get taken away? When can I get out of this crazy place? When you're worried and afraid, well, you know, you got to start bathing in his love then. And when you bathe in his love, you're bathing in your spirit because your spirit is the spirit of love. God's not apart from you. He's not far away and you're over here. And so you're trying to bathe in the love that's way up in heaven while you're here on earth. No, it's something that's already in you. And we've been developing for such a long time. We've been developing who we are not. I know I have. I know I, I have for so many years. I mean, the Jehovah's Witnesses religion, what it did is it pulled me so far away from identity in Christ that it's taken me years to even figure out what is this identity in Christ? What does that mean for me? Right? And you know, when I was a little boy, I was known to be very patient. When I was very, very young, I was told by my mother that I was the most patient child. But you know, over time, I found myself growing more and more impatient because I was developing impatience because what we had was always the end of the world coming, tribulation coming. You're in a rush, you're in a hurry. You better get your act together quickly because if you don't, you're gonna die, God's gonna destroy you. And so what's that do? It gets you in a rush. And when you get in a rush, you, you develop impatience. Instead of chilling out, calming down, entering into his rest. It's a labor to enter into his rest. Hebrews 4.11 says so. It's difficult, it's a hardship. It's not easy to enter into his rest. Why? Because of all the stuff your head's been filled with by other people or even by yourself, what you're feeding your mind with, right? What you are feeding your mind with. What are you feeding your mind with? Doomsday stuff. I'm not saying it's, you know, it's a terrible thing to be informed or to know about the signs and all these things that are happening, you know, Bible prophecy. I'm into it too, I love it, but I don't let myself get all impatient and worked up and worried and afraid or, or, or get on here on YouTube and start telling people so that I can get a bunch of hits and clicks on my videos and likes and subscribers because, oh man, I'm gonna jump on the bandwagon of talking about this eclipse thing and getting people all excited. Oh, it's a, a, a rapture. Well, here we are, you guys. Now, if you've been raptured, then obviously you're not watching this video. And if millions and millions of people have been raptured today, well, I guess I was left behind. And if you're watching this video right now, then I guess you were left behind too. So what's next, you guys? What's next? Oh, you might say, well, April 8th isn't over. Okay, cool. Fair enough. But if you're watching this on April 9th or April 10th, I guess April 8th has gone, has come and gone, hasn't it? So what's next? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? I guess the eclipse didn't bring the end. I guess this eclipse didn't bring the rapture. And guess what? When I was out there filming the sun, I didn't see the eclipse. But maybe I missed it. And <laughs> maybe I missed the rapture. Maybe I haven't seen the news yet. I'm not a news watcher, so maybe I haven't seen the news yet that said, attention, millions and millions of people have suddenly disappeared earthwide. What is going on? So I guess I got left behind. But here's the thing, you guys. Why don't we all work on developing what is in us? Now, when I say develop what is in you, I'm talking about removing everything that is not of the spirit of you, which is the spirit of Christ, getting rid of everything that is not of that spirit of Christ. All these attachments, all these labels, all of these beliefs, all this stuff that's glued to you somehow. What if we just drop this stuff, undevelop these things, right? Like impatience. Why don't you start undeveloping impatience 
so that you can develop this patience that's already in you. When I say develop it, let me uh, give you an example. I like to go to the gym and work out. When I work out, I am developing muscles, but I'm not gaining muscles that I don't already have. I have the muscles already. I'm developing what is already in me. You have the spirit of Christ in you. So what you are doing is you are developing what is already in you. But how? By undeveloping what is not of you. Everything that is not the truth about you, we want to get rid of. Right? Everything that is not of truth. Yeshua said the truth shall set you free. Do you want to be free? Then get rid of the lies that are, that are attached to you. Whether somebody else put them on you or you put them on yourself. So, all these years of being out of the Jehovah's Witnesses religion now, 22 years for me, I've heard now for these past 22 years, I've heard it all. I have heard it all. It always comes from the mouths of Christians. And the Christians are always, for all these years, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, the rapture's coming, the tribulation's coming, and they give these dates, and they give these prophecies, and then they make these YouTube videos, or they preach on the, at their churches, or whatever they're doing, holding up signs, warning everybody, and then looking foolish. No wonder people think this Christianity stuff's a joke. No wonder. No wonder people like me say are proud to have left the Jehovah's Witnesses religion, but not to enter into Christianity, but to enter into Christ, because there's a difference. I believe so. I don't think there's anything... I don't think there's a problem with talking about prophetic things or even signs in the scriptures. But I'm not going to get on the bandwagon with these people that are all hyped up about dates and such like that. Sure, maybe the Lord can give you a word for the time you're in. Like me, you know, before before next year comes, I, I always ask him, what's a theme for me to live by? in the year, let's say 2025, Lord, give me a theme that I can live by this year, something to keep in mind. You know, when 20, before 2024 came around, I asked him, what's the theme? And I'll share it on my YouTube. And the theme was, make it a year of no comparison, no comparison. And let me tell you, I could go on and on about this no comparison thing. This is not a, a prophecy that something's going to happen or not. But I want, I want you this year to really, if you watch my videos anyway, think about how no comparison has com applied to you, whether you're comparing yourself with other, other people or if you're saying, you know what? Nothing compares to having Christ in me. Nothing compares to having Christ in me. So whatever happens in this world, there is no comparison to having Christ in me, right? And, and if you know that, that should take you into a place of rest when you know nothing compares to having his spirit in you. There's just no way. Nothing compares to that. But, you know, there's a lot of um, comparison stuff, too, that I, I see with people. There's kids that are taking certain things, you know, because they want to look like, like at the gym. All these young guys doing all these, uh, all these, hor hor like, like juicing themselves up, flooding their bodies with all these hormones, and they're not even competitive bodybuilders, but they're comparing themselves with other people. And you know, I know, I know, I used to compare myself with bodybuilders and people like the Ultimate Warrior. Man, I, I well, I don't know if you know who Ultimate Warrior is. Was he died in? Uh, I think it was two thousand. I think it was 2014, I believe. And at 54 years old, the same age that my biological father 
passed away. But Ultimate Warrior was my young, my, my teenage hero. And I wanted to look like that guy so badly. I wanted to be ripped and huge, and you know, and I compared myself with him. And then you go to the gym, and it's hard not to compare yourself with other people. I remember when I uh, was taking these, I got all these pills from like nutrition stores like GNC and such. And I got all these pills that were supposed to be the equivalent of steroids. But, you know, I was Jehovah's Witness. I couldn't take steroids. That was illegal for me. So what did I do? I bought these pills that were supposed to be just like steroids. Well, if you add this pill and you add that pill together, it turns into something like a steroid, maybe even better. So I was, I was trying to do that, you know. And, and then um, and I don't remember getting all huge from that stuff, but it was, you know, a waste of money and probably a waste on my health. I was probably really hurting myself without even knowing it. And then for years, I got addicted to these pills called ephedrine. I don't know if you guys ever heard of ephedrine or took ephedrine, but I was young and ephedrine was legal. And somebody told me it was good because it's a Chinese herb called ma huang. So I was taking these high doses of ephedrine daily because I thought it would get me ripped. And then I thought the other pills would get me huge. And then I thought the protein shakes and all the stuff I was taking was going to get me jacked. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm over that mentality. But it's because I was comparing myself with others, you know, and I was thinking others were looking to, at me at the gym and saying, look at that puny guy. Look at that. Puny. You know, you think that and as a relief. To finally rid myself of all of that. I rid myself of that impatient attitude because I wasn't being patient. I wanted to get big, huge, and I wanted it fast, and it wasn't coming fast enough. So you need to undevelop impatience to develop what's already in you. The spirit of patience, it's in you. The spirit of patience is in you. So be patient, you guys. Stop getting people all hyped up and freaked out and worried just so you can get clicks or subscribers or viewers on your channel or even if you don't have a YouTube channel, but you want people to follow you. You want to be the voice that declared the prof prophetic word and you're hoping that people will say, look at this person. They, they're the ones that said it. The eclipse came and look it, here we are standing with the Lord. We met him in the air, met him in the clouds, right? In the sky, here we are with him. Oh, thank God this person gave me that prophetic date. Wow, it really happened. And then you get all the praise, right? Now, if you've already done these videos or been talking like stuff like that, don't beat yourself up, just learn from it. You know, that's like me. If I, I, you know, I was a Jehovah's Witness for 30 years, knocking on people's doors, giving them false prophecies. And I was using the Bible to back my stuff up. I was just taking what I learned from my leaders and doing what I thought was right, you guys. Now, what if I just sat there today and beat myself up for the 30 years of misleading whoever I did? Men, women, children, I mean, think about it. Think about what it's like if you lived my life. You misled people for 30 years and you used God's name and you used the Bible to mislead them. Can you imagine what that would do to you? So, you know, you got to forgive yourself. God's forgiven you. So you forgive yourself, right? And move forward and learn and learn from it. Humble yourself, right? Humble yourself, but also be patient. Be patient because that's who you are in spirit anyway. All right, guys, I love you. I hope this has blessed somebody. If it's offended you at all, feel free to unsubscribe. <laughs> all right, you guys have a great day. See you all next time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for such a beautiful day. Thank you for such a beautiful day. Thank you for putting me in this beautiful place to live. I really appreciate it. And thank you for all the people that do watch this channel. I hope they're edified.
and I hope that they learn who they are real soon. But if not, that's okay. You're patient, Lord. You're patient with us. So I thank you for that. I thank you, Lord, for your patience. I thank you for your kindness and your gentleness. I thank you for your compassion. I thank you for your understanding. But above all, I thank you for your love. And may we all get to know this love deeply because it's who we are in your spirit. Amen.